Hello, everyone. Today, we study section two: cellular adaptations. Normally, cells maintain homostasis when they encounter physiologic stresses or pathologic stimuli. They can undergo adaptation, achieving a new steady state and preserving viability and function. Firstly, the definition of cellular adaptations. Adaptations are reversible changes in the number, size, phenotype, metabolic activity, or function of cells in response to changes in their environment. Cellular adaptations are protective mechanisms in response to injury. They allow cells to modulate their structure and functions, and thus escape injury. Such adaptation can take several distinct forms, including hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, metaplasia. Firstly, the Definition of hypertrophy. That means an increase in the size of tissue or organ due to increased size of individual cells. There are two types of hypertrophy: physiologic hypertrophy and pathologic hypertrophy. Type one. Physiologic hypertrophy. Let's take the uterus as example. The uterus is enlarged during pregnancy because smooth muscle cells were stimulated by estrogen. This is what we call endocrine hypertrophy. Here in picture A, this is the normal uterus. This is the gravid uterus. We notice that the pregnant uterus is nearly twenty times larger than the normal one. Picture B shows us the smooth muscle cells of normal uterus. They are small and spindle-shaped. Picture C shows us the large plump cell in gravid uterus. The size of individual smooth muscle cells increased. That's the hypertrophy caused by hormonal stimuli. The second type is pathologic hypertrophy. For example, in a hypertension case, the heart enlarged because of the increasing workload. The removal of one kidney. Usually cause another one hypertrophy. That's because the lefted one needs to cover the work of two kidneys. The left picture is normal myocardial cell. The right picture is myocardial hypertrophy. Compared to the normal cell, the hypertrophy cell has larger size and.、Uh, Larger nucleus and、uh, darker staining of cytoplasm. This is gross specimen of myocardial hypertrophy. Here is the left ventricle. We notice that the lumen of left ventricle is enlarged, and also the ventricular wall is thickened. If the increasing workload exceeds compensatory capacity of myocardial cells, the cardiac failure may develop. Now let's talk about the second form of adaptation, hyperplasia. It is an increase in the number of cells in an organ or tissue, which may cause an increase in the volume. It is noticed that hyperplasia 
and hypertrophy can occur together and often in response to the same stimuli. Hyperplasia can also be divided into two types, the physiologic and pathologic types. The first type, physiologic hyperplasia, it includes hormonal hyperplasia and compensatory hyperplasia. We all know that the female breast enlarged during puberty and pregnancy. That is due to the hormone effects causing the proliferation of glandular epithelium in breast. The proliferation of smooth muscle cells of uterus during pregnancy is another example of hormonal hyper hyperplasia. We talked about it in hypertrophy. That means SMC of uterus can undergo both hypertrophy and hyperplasia in response to hormonal stimuli. But the cardiac muscle can only undergo hypertrophy because in adult, they have limit capacity to divide. Secondly, compensatory hyperplasia. When we talk about liver donation, sometimes a donor is a living healthy person. Person, his liver could be partially resected, which is less than 70%. That means 30% of liver is reserved in the donor's body. Then the mitotic activity in the remaining cells begin as early as 12 hours later, eventually restoring the liver to its normal size and weight. This process will take about three to six months. That's the compensatory hyperplasia. The pathologic hyperplasia, it is usually caused by excessive hormonal or growth factor stimulation. For example, endometrial hyperplasia is usually caused by imbalance between estrogen and progesterone and leads to abnormal menstrual bleeding. Another example, benign prostatic hyperplasia is induced by responses to androgen. This is endometrial hyperplasia. The normal thickness of endometrium is less than one centimeter. This area is normal, but on the funders of uterus, the endometrium undergo hyperplasia. They become very thick, show the finger-like appearance. This is a prostate hyperplasia. Normally, the long axis of prostate is 4 cm on average. But in this picture, it's more than 5 cm. This is gastric polyp. The gastric glands proliferate it and they are irregular in order. Some glands dilate it. That's a result of hyperplasia stimulated by inflammation. Pathologic hyperplasia is controlled by normal regulatory control mechanism. That means it is different from cancer. However, if the imbalance, uh, for example, the imbalance between estrogen and uh, progesterone remains, the endometrial hyperplasia could have a chance to develop into cancer. That's the end of this section.